All right, so we've talked a little bit about the different states and modes that a system can operate in. We looked at our different storage types. So now let's talk about the protection mechanisms. How do we protect data at a specific security level from being compromised? Well, the first thing we may want to do is look at how we can secure our processes, because if a process can do things it ought not to do, it can corrupt our data. A common technique is called layering. Within layering, we establish layers of functionality. You can look at it as a stack. Remember when you were young and you would create stacks of blocks? You always start at the bottom and you stack the blocks one on top of another. Now, in a data structures environment, the only way to remove items from the stack is to take them off the top. You can't grab something out of the middle. We all know how much fun it is, of course, to knock the stack over, so let's stick with a data structures type of environment where you have to start from the bottom, add to the top, and remove from the top. So in this case, the most sensitive processes would be at the bottom layer. Now, at the risk of confusing you, another way of looking at this would be a ring concentric environment where the most sensitive process is at the center and then we start moving outward in rings, kind of like the solar system where the sun would be the center process, most sensitive process, and then each planet's orbit would be a less and less secure layer built around the outside. Now, the way this works is that each layer operates at a specific predefined security level. One layer can only communicate with its neighbor layers through well-defined secure paths. This ensures that if there is sensitive data at one layer, it cannot be transmitted to another layer unless it is through a well-defined secure path that says, yes, you can transfer this secure data from layer 1 to layer 2 or layer 12 to layer 13, wherever it may be.